Now for people that aren't getting prescribed TRT, but want the increase in testosterone, there are these plant compounds like Tonga Ali and another one, which is very interesting. It's a Nigerian shrub called T Fidogia agrestis. And it mimics luteinizing hormone, which is the hormone that comes out of the hypothalamus that stimulates the testes if you got those and the ovaries if you've got those to make more testosterone or estrogen. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Zach and welcome to Nutrition Library where we take an evidence-based and natural approach to uh, supplementation and nutrition. If you are new to the channel, do me a huge favor and hit the red subscribe button that's below this video uh, so you can stay up to date with all of our future content. Thank you so much. So after my last steroid cycle about nine years ago, I got something that'll get him going. Well, if there's anyone I can trust, it's a stranger at the gym holding a dirty needle. After deciding to not go on to TRT, one of the first things that I set out to do was to essentially just find all of the most potent natural compounds. I have the power! <laughs> Um, that could be used to naturally stimulate the production of testosterone um, in the male body by directly stimulating the HPG axis. Um, and one of the compounds that I ran across several times over the past several years is what used to be a little known herb known as Fidogia agrestis. Now, Andrew Huberman uh, mentioned this compound when he was on the Joe Rogan podcast a few months ago. And since then, it has been exploding in popularity. And so because of this, I finally felt it necessary to uh, make a video on it. So here we go. Now, Fidogia agrestis is a Nigerian shrub native to parts of Eastern Africa that has been used in traditional medicine for over a thousand years as an erectogenic aid. However, it wasn't until 2005 that Fidogia agrestis captured attention for its possible effects on hormones when it was discovered to increase testosterone by up to 600% in male rats. This obviously sparked some extreme interest in the herb for a few years that eventually led a group of researchers to assess whether or not Fidogia had any signs of toxicity in 2008. And unfortunately, the results were pretty alarming. Now, in this study in particular, the researchers concluded that, and I quote, the alterations brought about by the aqueous extract of Fidogia agrestis are indications of adverse effects on the male rat testicular function and this may adversely affect the functional capacity of the testes. And a follow-up study in the following year found similar results as the researchers concluded that, and I quote, the other evidence in this study suggests disruption of the ordered lipid bilayer of the plasma membrane of the hepatocytes and nephrons. This might have resulted from the peroxidation of the polyunsaturated fatty acids on the membranes of the hepatocytes and nephrons made possible by the functional groups or the product of metabolism of the extract. This may be responsible for the compromise of the integrity of the plasma membranes of the hepatocytes and nephrons. So not only does it appear that Fidogia agrestis is causing damage to testicular function, but it also seems to be damaging the liver and kidneys as well. This is not good, and I cannot more highly recommend against the consumption of Fidogia agrestis. There are much more proven and safe options available. Now, does Fidogia agrestis increase testosterone in rats? Absolutely, and remarkably so, actually. However, it is worth noting that this doesn't necessarily mean that it also does the same thing in humans. The literature on compounds like this is replete with examples of compounds that increase testosterone in rodents but don't even touch testosterone levels in humans. And so even though Fidogia agrestis seems to be extremely promising as a natural testosterone inducer, um, it also appears to be extremely toxic to not only testicular function but also to just pretty much every cell in the human body, which is just not good. Now, I do have a complete 20-page guide on um, natural supplements that have been proven to be safe and effective at increasing testosterone in men. But just for the sake of time, I do want to go ahead and touch on kind of like my just my three primary options when it comes to natural compounds and supplements that have been shown uh, to improve and increase testosterone production in men. Um, and my first one is ashwagandha, hands down the number 
number one research compound that has been shown to improve testicular function in men, uh, followed up by Tonkat Ali and Shilajit, all of which have proven toxicological uh, data to support their safety as well as data to support their use in healthy men, which is an extreme rarity um, in the literature. With the amount of research that we have nowadays on safe and natural compounds that can be used to improve hormone function, going to something like Fidoja agrestis just isn't necessary anymore. Now, before we close out this video, I do want to use this as an opportunity to communicate a broader point that is becoming increasingly more important, and that is that really smart people can say really wrong things sometimes. Now, to be clear, I love Andrew Huberman. I think he is a fantastic thought leader in the realm of men's health and fitness. However, he does tend to think on a much more academic level as opposed to a clinical level, which are two major different ways of looking at the scientific literature. His thought process is much more geared to the discovery of new information and in new knowledge as opposed to the implementation of current knowledge. And because of this, guys like him are much more inclined to um, implement much more experimental and possibly even unsafe options into their uh, diet and supplementation regimen. But just because guys like him are willing to experiment with things like this doesn't necessarily mean that you should as well. Now, to be absolutely clear, we need guys like him that are on the forefront of just the discovery of knowledge in the nutritional and health space. But just be careful when you try to implement things like this into your own personal life. Just because something is natural doesn't necessarily mean that it's safe. Now, if you guys are interested in any of the free supplement guides that I have on my website, uh, there is a link down in the description to all of those. Um, download all of them if you want. That's what they're there for. And if you are new to this conversation of natural hormone optimization or you haven't got your testosterone tested yet, I would highly recommend it. It's a great uh, starting point for most guys to just simply get quantitative data into their hands on where their hormones are at so they can implement a proper uh, strategy to optimize their personal hormone profile. And so if you guys are interested in this, there is a link down in the description for a at-home blood test that you guys can use to uh, test your hormones. So, um, but that's it for this video video guys. If you have any questions, leave a comment as always. I'll try to get back to as many of you guys as possible. But other than that, I will see you guys next time.